All right, moving on to the sixth video in the series, uh, we discussed the last piece of the design and planning puzzle. At least this is the last thing I add to my implementation plan before actually moving on to implementing the solution. You may find it helpful to devise additional steps on your own. Now keep in mind that this video series is focused entirely on the network infrastructure design and deployment. So there are a few other things that I normally uh, include in my implementation plan that are beyond the scope of this video series and I haven't shown you. Anyway, the last thing I do before moving on is very, very important. This is where I spend a majority of my time devising the final details for bonding, VLAN groups, and Oracle VM networks. To accomplish this step, I create a worksheet using a spreadsheet since it's e for easy for me to visualize and easily change things. And again, this is where I spend most of my time. My user reminders that these videos pertain only to Oracle VM 3.1 and 3.2. Also, that these are not best practices per se, but suggestions on how you might want to go about planning and implementing a network infrastructure for Oracle VM. After creating the diagrams I showed in the last video, I began to understand what I'm going to need for my host names and IP addresses. So let's step through a quick review of what you'll need to consider. We start with the same model we've been discussing so far. But first, I need to let you know that between the time I recorded the first set of videos and the remaining videos, I had to relocate my lab to a new facility. So uh, some of the VLAN names have changed. Uh, I had to change VLAN 200 to VLAN 1154, and don't worry, you don't need to memorize this stuff. Uh, we'll figure it out as we go along. Uh, I changed VLAN 202 uh, to VLAN uh, 1155, and the internal facing IPs are now on VLAN uh, 1153 instead of VLAN 442. All right. The management server will need at least a canonical host name and an IP for ETH0 to allow the manager to communicate with the Oracle VM servers. Now keep in mind that the Oracle VM manager does not need to be on the same exact subnet as the Oracle VM servers or server pools. It just has to be able to get the network packets across the network to and from the Oracle VM servers. Now this is why a single Oracle VM manager can manage uh, server pools across the WAN or different computer rooms or labs or quads or whatever uh, in a single data center. You may have additional network interfaces and IP host names uh, for other purposes, uh, such as what I was talking about before, um, so you can use NFS if that's something you want to do. But just keep in mind that no other networking is required on the management server except for an IP and host name that will be used to communicate with the Oracle VM servers. We'll also need IP and host names to use as uh, virtual IPs or VIP uh, for pool one and two. Now remember the VIP is managed by the cluster, not the Oracle VM manager, and it's automatically assigned or moved to different uh, Oracle VM servers as needed by the agent on the uh, Oracle VM servers. So it's part of the clustering, not the manager. Now you can change it with the manager, but it's not managed by the manager. That, that's why we can lose the manager and your server pools and VMs will remain running. And if you lose a server while you you don't have any manager that's running, the all the HA enabled uh, uh, virtual machines will still automatically move over to other servers in the pool even though the manager is not around. Finally, you'll need IPs for the Oracle VM servers, DOM0. In our case, We'll need an IP for server management uh, on uh, VLAN uh, 1154. Uh, we'll need uh, one for the cluster heartbeat on uh, VLAN 911. Uh, we'll need uh, an IP and host name for the live migration on VLAN 901. And then we'll also need for DOM0 an IP host name for uh, iSCSI NFS on VLAN 1155. Now let's take a look at the worksheet I built. Now keep in mind while you're looking at the spreadsheet that it might take you hours to devise a nice naming scheme for your uh, VLAN groups and networks. You have to muck with it uh, a lot. Uh, you keep uh, massaging it and fixing it and uh, you know changing things. 
uh, until it makes sense uh, to you and other people. Now, make sure you have other people weigh in on your design. Uh, something that makes sense to you might not be very meaningful to someone else on your team. It's okay for other people to help shape the design. Um, don't make the names of the networks cryptic either. Um, so don't use names such as VLAN 1154 or 10.80.154.0. It makes it hard for you to remember how each network is used and it certainly makes it harder for other people to understand how to maintain and troubleshoot. So make the names of your networks obvious and simple to understand. All right, now here's the spreadsheet. Okay, so you can see at the bottom in the tabs there I have uh, bonding, um, I have uh, Oracle, uh, the OVM VLAN groups, OVM networks, uh, server IP info, and uh, the virtual machine IP info. Um, so that's all I really need for my networking. Um, so let's take a look at bonding first. Uh, now this is very important uh, because you may have different servers, they may be cabled differently. Um, you really should uh, actually map out how your bonding goes. And so on uh, my server 15, which is the one I keep logging into, our bonding is going to be uh, bond 0 is going to have ETH 0 and ETH 7. Uh, bond 1 is going to have ETH 1 and ETH 6. And bond 2 will have ETH 2 and ETH 5. Now on the other servers, notice it's slightly different. And this is why it's really important to document this, because you may have different servers in different pools, like I have. And the bonding might be different. Uh, and this is another thing that is a point of confusion for people. Um, so I have, uh, like on the other server, my six, uh, my server six, which is a Dell server, uh, ETH zero and ETH five are in bond zero. Bond one has ETH one and ETH two, and bond two has ETH three and ETH four, which is completely different uh, from uh, fifteen. All right, let's take a look at uh, VLAN groups now. Okay, so let me explain the columns really quick. Um, so I have the actual name of the VLAN groups that I'm going to be creating over here in this column. I'm creating, uh, what, four different uh, groups here. Uh, I got uh, all server pools, bond zero, uh, pool one, what's going to go on bond one, pool two, what's going to go on bond one, and then all pools for bond uh, two. Um, now my VLAN segments I put over here and that apply, that are applicable to each one of these things, and every one of them is unique. Uh, now, I also have a segment description and a network role. Now, these two things are not, when you're actually building the VLAN groups, um, there is no place to enter this information. This is really from the network uh, that we're going to do. Now, I put this here um, because that helps me keep what I, in mind what I'm trying to accomplish here. So I write this little description down as I'm write, building all the rest of this stuff over here so I can keep things straight. Like the network roles, you know, that's a network thing, but it keeps me on track. That's all it's for. Um, so when I'm, I, it keeps me on track to build this, these columns and, and these columns over here. All right. Um, so uh, that just about does it for, oh, I do want to mention that this is key this is where you're going to spend most of your time. Uh, this is so important. It's, if you, when you're done with this, actually implementing this, designing this, and then implementing it in the Oracle VM Manager, uh, about 95% of your networking is completed at that point. Once you build the VLAN groups, that, that bear is repeating. <laughs> Once you build the VLAN groups, 90% or 95% of your networking is already completed. All right, we're going to move on now. All right, so here's the uh, Oracle VM networks that we're going to be uh, build uh, based on the uh, Oracle VLAN groups. Um, now, like I said, 90, 95% of your networking is completed before you get to this step right here. Um, when you do this step, you're basically just assigning, you're giving the network a name. Um, you are assigning a role to it, and this one's already assigned from install, so you can't change that. But you can change this uh, in the implementation, and you can add this description over here. Now, these descriptions are very important, and uh, so are these names. Um, so don't skip these two steps. And this is really important that you, you come up with these names that, that are easy to understand. Um, so as you can see here, uh, I make it DOM0. Um, and, uh, and so these are DOM U and DOM 0. 
uh, and notice that DOM0 just tells me that everything here pertains only to the Oracle VM servers. Everything down here pertains to my virtual machine that are going to be running. Uh, so that's the first thing in my name. Now the next thing I do is I also say what is it, what is the scope of this network? So this is for all servers and all pools. Uh, on Bond Zero, on VLAN 1154, all the servers and all the server pools will use this for the server management. This one is um, for the heartbeat, um, and this one's for the live migrate. Um, and this one right here is all of the server pools and all the virtual machines on all the servers and all the server pools will use this one for its ETH0. So 100% of the virtual machines are going to use this uh, network for their ETH0. Okay, and then if this DOM U or virtual machine is in pool 1, then all of the NFS traffic is going to be coming across this network right here. Um, if I am in pool 1 and I am the BAM rack database uh, node, then this is where my private rack traffic is going to go across here. Alright, so this is very clear of what this is. It tells me on DOM0, right there, it tells me on DOM0 uh, what bond and VLAN uh, it's going to be associated with. And then on DOMU, it's going to tell me what the net front interface is on DOMU. So at a glance, I can tell what this network does very easily. I further enhance that with this uh, description over here. So this is how you design the Oracle VM networks. And you will use, you will actually use uh, this information here. I will cut and paste from here. Um, this will already magically be assigned by the time you get to it, so you won't have to worry about that. Um, I, this is already assigned. It's always assigned. You can't change this. Don't try to change it. Um, and, uh, then I have my description which I'll paste in there. So I will copy and paste this. I will check that box uh, which is already checked and this one right here I will add that description and then I'll just basically go through it and hit finish at the end of it and it'll create that. And basically it's going to rename this. Now this one's slightly different. You can change this. So um, you'll see when we get to it but um, uh, I'm going to cop copy and paste this when I'm creating a new network. I'm going to check this box down here for cluster heartbeat, and then I'm going to copy and paste this into the description. I'm going to do the same thing for every one of these in here. So this is very important, and I actively use this spreadsheet. So I know it looks tedious. It is tedious. Don't get me wrong. This is tedious, and it takes a long time, but uh, the copy and paste just makes this thing go really fast, because once you're in the implementation, you're just copying and pasting. Uh, very simple. It makes things go very fast. All right, let's uh, move on because it's uh, getting to be a little long here. Uh, all right, so then I also put down for my servers, uh, I will gather all this information and put it in one place also. Um, so it's a very quick reference. Um, so for my manager, I've got the OVM management. That's its role. You don't actually pick that. Um, but uh, it's my management server. The host name is my manager, and here's the uh, IP address. There's the net mask I'll need, and there's the gateway, and there's the segment it's going to be on. Um, now I do for my pool one, I have the VIP. Um, then inside my pool one are these servers, and here's all the different host names and IPs that I have for that one server. And I just do this information, I have this information for every server uh, in all my pools. Uh, again, tedious, but well worth it. All right, moving on to the last thing, the uh, virtual machine uh, IP information. So this should give you a better idea of how these uh, interfaces actually end up looking uh, on the guest. So keep in mind that everything here is pool one. And remember, pool one was rack nodes and middleware only. And everything here is uh, pool two. Um, and everything in pool two is an application server. Now, some of the things, uh, the application servers, are internal facing only, and two of the application servers are external facing also. 
Now remember here, everything in server pool one is internal facing. So let's look at this really quick um, because you'll use part of this information for the manager and part of it when you're actually configuring networking on the guest uh, operating system. Um, all right, so pool one, here's my first guest um, and here's all the networks that I'm going to put in there. Uh, which will create three different networks. The order, as you'll see later, is significant uh, when you the order that you put it in when you're creating the Oracle VM guest. Um, all right, so we have a net front device of ETH0, ETH1, and ETH2, uh, and these are all for the rack nodes. And then when the middleware doesn't need uh, an ETH2 at all, so it only has an ETH0 and an ETH1. All right. Now, uh, pool two is your application servers, and notice here that we have um, application servers that are internal facing only for the BAM application server and the HR uh, server, app server, and that uh, only has two interfaces each, ETH0 and ETH1. Um, now, the external facing ones, of course, have ETH0, ETH1, and ETH2, and notice that every ETH2 in the different type, if it's a CRM, uh, app server, then it's going to be on 902, you know, VLAN 902. And if it is a um, uh, SCM, then ETH2 is going to be on VLAN 903. Well, hopefully, the tour of the spreadsheet put all the work we've done uh, so far into perspective. I think the worksheet is the single most important tool you will create. The worksheet is the absolute key to success, and it will make the actual implementation take hours instead of days or weeks. Anyway, uh, in the next video, we're going to begin doing the hands-on work, uh, starting with what the network configuration looks like on the management server. Um, so be sure and watch the next video.